Babinski. I'm a dermatologist. I'm a physician in Fort Lauderdale. I've been here about 30 some odd years, 37, 38 years. Been a dermatologist almost 40 years. I've been in public health. I've worked in clinics around, but I'm also in private practice. My schooling was varied and multiple. I have a PhD in mycology, which is study of fungi. I wound up going to medical school in Boston, at Boston University. I did my internship out of Columbia in New York City, and I went back to Boston University for my training in dermatology. After that, I moved right down to Fort Lauderdale. It was abysmal. That's probably a great word to use. Came to my mind, that's the word I'll use. People were so afraid of this condition. I remember I was in public health and I was working in STD control at that time, which are now sexually transmitted infections. We would have meetings periodically with the head of the health department. And being that I was in public health with the contagious diseases, we would get different information. And I remember the first cases that came out of Kaposi sarcoma and pneumocystis pneumonia. I was in the MMWR, the Morbidity and Mortality Weekly Reporter. It's a governmental periodical that comes out weekly. And, and it really portended a, a condition or a disease of infection and what looked like cancers. Most of the people at that time who were getting it, or maybe all of them, were gay men. So at that time, it was looked upon very, very much fearfully by the medical community by the private community, by parents, and by people themselves with one another. Don't touch me, be careful of this, that. There, I wouldn't say there was panic, but there was a fear of it so much that people were stigmatized with it, as leprosy would be throughout biblical times till now. The government response was hesitant and non-existent. People did not look at this as a problem that needed public health measures to involve their, their research into it, control of it, or treatment of it. So it was basically nil. When I say nil, that means zero. There were a couple impressive situations. Number one, there was a patient in our county who was fired from his job because he had HIV or AIDS. I don't remember what it was at that time. The health department had come to me. My office manager at the time said, they're going to fire this guy. And I said, no, they won't, Barbara. They're not like that. We had a meeting in my office. We had a, a tape made. I did not believe it would happen, but my office manager was a little German woman, and she said, they're going to do it. I'll bring in a tape recorder. That saved the day. After we were done, the day after they fired the guy and was headlines down here. Well, it was brought to the ACLU. Well, it was a four, three or four year involvement of legal issues. The ACLU went to his defense. I was subpoenaed and we eventually got the, the tape brought in years later for evidence. And there it was right there. Can you catch it from a doorknob? People don't want to be with him. What about the coffee cups? Well, what about the toilet seat? What about breathing the same air? What about a spoon that he uses? Should he be in the same room where we are? It was all on tape. After they lost the case, the fellow was reinstituted by the help of the ACLU for the American Civil Liberties Union. They brought him in as the first tape test case of a person with AIDS as a health disability. So he won all his back pay. And then what the hell did they do? They stuck him in the morgue to work there. It was egregious. That's the way this county worked at that time, or people who feared this. In hospitals, if one were sick, there were gowns, masks that had to be put on on the isolation areas outside the patient's room. People wouldn't go in. Doctors would poke their heads in. Well, what's wrong? A patient is in there sick that potentially could be treated if he or she were not sick enough you know, and get back to a reasonable amount of health. It evolved that when people got out of the hospital, what, what uh, resolve did they have after? We developed a health clinic in Broward County. I don't know what the government thought at points, but I know when I spoke to somebody who was in the health industry, the head of the health department, 
down here, he said to me, well, you know, they're all going to die anyway. And I mean, that statement resonates in me to this day. It, I really just got explosive when I spoke to that man. He knows who he is. I'll make no names. People know my reaction to it. They know whom I was talking about from our community. And I think that was the trend of most public health officials and government officials. And what made it even worse is that this man who was the public health administrator of our county in South Florida then was brought on to the National Committee by Ronald Reagan to look at AIDS. This guy should not have been involved in it at all. You know, people were fearful of it, and, and I think government's action is later, look at it later than now. I mean, we see that presently with Ebola, there was a hesitancy about it until it started reaching our own communities. And then the government started looking at it a lot more extensively. But people used to say, oh, the little children, they didn't deserve it. No human being deserves HIV. Nobody should get that much hate and animosity directed at them. That's what I would like to see and where there's no hate. But what a hassle we had getting that going. And so th this is just the whole past history, you know, and I, I get so animated about it because it stinks of what it is and what human beings did, and we in the medical profession what we did. I have not picked up AIDS or HIV, and I've been working with this for over 30 years. You know, uh, risky behavior. I've had risky behavior. I've curtailed my behavior. One of the points is be aware of what one is doing and, and change one's behavior. But there still is infection in itself, or we're probably the leader in the nation of new infections still in 2014. Our findings, since the medications are out there, people can now live with HIV and just take medications. It's a false sense of security. I think it's like saying, well, I can get cancer and I can smoke knowing I'll get cancer, but there is care to help me live longer. It's an infection. It's going to it's going to be a long process because if that's the concept of the individuals who are getting infected wantonly, they really are not going to take care of themselves and follow through the way they need to. Now, in South Florida, there's an epidemic of drugs, and when I say drugs, illicit drugs, and I think the one that I am reading about more and more is crystal meth. The stigma that comes about now with the past epidemic of Ebola, they've gone through the same thing as far as patients go, patient care. There are advocates in the health industry. There are people who've gone over to help patients who have Ebola. So many have died in the past several months with the in uh, infection, the epidemic in other parts of the world. It really hit home here in the United States with the health workers that are coming back. Not only the volunteers, but the military people who have to go over and help set up facilities over there. What's going to happen there? They're finding the same sort of stigma. When people don't know what something is about, there is fear. That happened with syphilis in the United States in the 1890s. It's happened with epidemics. It happened with the Black Plague in medieval times. So it's the unknown. The unknown that really is a big factor here get a little bit educated, get a lot educated. We're doing so much at this point in time. I'm proud to say that the medical community finally has come about and there is so much support and there is so much that's been done with medications. I remember when there were no medications around and then I remember when the first medication came out. I was at a conference down here in Fort Lauderdale, Margaret Fischel, Dr. Margaret Fischel, who was one of the head research for the NIH out of the University of Miami, announced that medication was approved. You know, so that was a beginning and it had to be refined. People who were on it had problems, some people died, but it was a beginning. Now you look at really where we've been from the 1980s to 2014, it's 30 some odd years that this has been around and we have made progress, probably more progress in the shortest amount of time than any other condition. And I think it serves as a template to look at how we handle other epidemics, Ebola, the SARS, the bird flu, the influenza. I'm more pleased that it's there. Now, I'd like to see happy when there is no more.